Hello everyone, thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Viktor Nilstroyev, maybe you know me. I'm the author of the course Optimizing Expert Advisors in MetaTrader 4. Uh, uh, there is a question. Okay, hi Ravi. Yeah, um, so I apologize for um, such a confusing mistake because um, uh, actually we mentioned that we are going to start this webinar at 3 p.m. London time, but uh, currently it's 2 p.m. It's because uh, United States um, have already shifted to the summer time, but Europe not. So if someone uses the um, London time, so probably he will be late for this webinar, but of course you can um, you can watch this uh, the record of this webinar on Forex Boat, or maybe next day. Okay, so looks like there are ten attendees right now. Hello, guys. Tell me where are you from? By the way, I'm from Russia. Uh, you can also share your opinions about about my course okay Lance from San Francisco Rene from Germany and Ravi from Toronto okay good um, uh, guys did you watch my course about um, optimizing expert advisors If yes, just tell me what do you think. Oh, thank you, Ravi. Okay, Lance. Yeah, I think that's a, if you are a beginner, that's a good chance for you to start with algorithmic trading. Okay. Uh, by the way, guys, I want to remind about uh, Forex Boat 2000 giveaway. So may, all of you. All of you got emails, I believe, and um, uh, there is also an announcement on forexboat.com that uh, we at Forexboat, uh, together with uh, Exit Trader, this is Australian broker, so we um, want you to participate in 2000 USD giveaway. It's a good chance for you to get real money. If you, for example, if you don't have a deposit to start, but you are, uh, you really want to start with Forex trading, you can just try your chance and win this prize and get $2,000 to your account. It's okay to claim them after a victory. That's no problem. Oh, oh, by the way, so when I started trading Forex, my initial deposit was 2,200. And then in uh, six months, I increased it to uh, 20,000. That was incredible, but uh, I don't believe that I can repeat it. But at that moment, there was a period of high volatility in the market and my expert advisors worked successfully there however um, so now i don't demonstrate such a good yield so i if you ask me how how i did it i just can't explain because um, it was just the market who allowed me to get and to earn to get money uh, from it so okay so what else? Um, so what, what time is it? Uh, okay, we are waiting for more attendees. Currently there are 11 people joining. Okay, so there is a question from Ravi. Let me answer. So the question is, backtesting in tick data mode takes much time and Ravi intends to buy a good computer so and asks me for configuration um what can i suggest um 
so I can't suggest you the exact configuration, but um, uh, Revit, so you should uh, buy a computer with at least four cores. So, which uh, I, I mean, it will be much faster. And um, if you run a backtest or optimization, um, it wouldn't bog your computer. So it wouldn't slow it. So, if speaking about RAM, um, I really don't know. I'm currently satisfied with uh, four gigabytes. Um, I just, I just recommend you. Um, just don't spend much time uh, while optimizing. Um, Try to increase the step, and then uh, after you almost find the exact settings, you can uh, decrease the step a little bit, then optimize it once again, and so on. By the way, um, you can also rent a VPS and optimize your expert advisor there. So, for example, when I uh, when I trade forex with the help of expert advisors, I don't run them on my computer because I can't. Um, I don't want my computer to work 24 hours a day. That's why I rent um, a VPS and run them there. But of course, every day I check if the VPS works correctly, and it. Um, so sometimes it reboots and you have to check. Okay. So let's start with the webinar. By the way, there is some inside. Today um, I'm going to share two different expert advisors with you. Of course, I can't say that they are um, much better than the Stomper that was presented in the course, but you may try to use them if you optimize them correctly according to the procedure that I um, that I demonstrated in the course. Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, let's start the webinar. So just once again, if you don't know, um, uh, thank you for joining. And my name is Victor Neustroyf. I'm a private trader. I've been trading um, financial markets th since 2003. And I started with Forex. Then I brought in my horizons to commodity markets. Now I uh, specialize on agricultural markets because I consider them to be more transparent. But at the same time, I still have a few strategies that work on Forex. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera. Please read the disclaimer. Today, the topic of the webinar is diversification in algorithmic trading or the role of diversification in algorithmic trading. And today, I want to visually demonstrate the benefits of diversification by examining the backtested returns of three different strategies on 10 different pairs uh, compared to trading just one of these strategies on a certain currency pair. And Please note that past performance is no indication of future results. This is what you should remember. So if, for example, you decided to run um, any expert advisors on your own account, you should be responsible for that. And of course, we hope that um, the performance will be repeated, but it's financial market, there are no guarantees. 
Okay, you, you may know that most forex traders concentrate their risk on one or two instruments, and uh, this can lead to devastating effects on your portfolio if you get caught on the wrong side of an expected large gap in the market, for example. It can also lead to very volatile trading performance, which may cause burnout or lead to excessive risk taking. Okay, I, I hope you read the disclaimer. Let's continue. This is the topic. By the way, uh, lack of diversification also means that you are restricting your trading opportunities to just the instruments that you trade. A trader who was just trading Euro USD with his strategy could have some serious underperformance compared to other markets. This is the plan of our webinar. So I will tell you what diversification is, why it's important to diversify, so which strategies uh, you should combine, which markets to combine, and then I will demonstrate uh, how to use the statistics of each strategies to to define its role in your portfolio. And at the end of the webinar, I will tell you about important aspects that you should take into account if you decided to create a portfolio of expert advisors. Okay, let's now discuss what diversification is. Diversification is a risk management technique that mixes a wide variety of investments within a portfolio. The rationale behind this technique contends that a portfolio constructed of different kinds of investments will on average yield higher return and pose a lower risk than any individual investment found within the portfolio. Without diversification, a trader remains exposed to unnecessary risk. Uh, whereas diversification in stock trading means investing in different market segments, in forex, in forex trading, it is the use of different trading strategies for the same currency pair, or the use of the same trading strategy for different currency pairs. And these currency pairs shouldn't correlate with each other. Okay, you should understand that diversification is not just the number of currency traded, but also the use of different strategies on the same currency. Okay, before we jump right into how Forex can help when it comes to diversifying your portfolio, you should understand just why diversification is so important. The reality is that uh, the, the put all your eggs in one basket approach presents a danger on an unprecedented level. For example, a short, sharp shift in the market can completely unravel a portfolio. Uh, let me show you. Let's just say that you have a long position on Euro Canadian dollar, so you are heavily invested in Euro. And then, for example, you see the news, um, for example, that Portugal and Italy experience serious problems with their foreign debt and the yield of their government bonds increased and this fact had a significant impact on euro that's why euro against canadian dollar dropped this is going to seriously dent your bottom line possibly even driving your investment efforts into the red uh, but however if you had taken the decision to counteract and counterbalance this with a short position on euro against Japanese yen, your portfolio may just be able to rebound 
So for example, you had a long position on Euro Canadian dollar and it dropped, and you also had a short position in, in Euro against Japanese yen and it also dropped. So you got some loss in the first position and profit, yeah, and some profit on the second position, on the short position. And maybe uh, the profit will compensate the loss or at least compensate the part of the loss. So this is a very simple explanation, but it does underline the fact that without diversification, any investor is inviting on unnecessary risk. Uh, people often discuss portfolio diversification with Forex and not without good reason. Uh, Forex market has always been a fine place to diversify as there are so many opportunities for profit. First of all, trading on, uh, Forex trading is available for everyone. Um, the second feature of the Forex market is that the Forex runs 24 hours a day while other markets are down. Forex allows you to not only remain diversified, but also remain active. And the last but not least is that Forex provides you with lots of options to trade on different instruments. And also Forex market is the most liquid market in the world. It means that any trader has the power to trade long or short freely and thus make a profit in any market condition. There is also high yield exposure potential. Uh, there are two common ways to diversify your portfolio when trading Forex. First, you can use different currency pairs. And the second way is to apply different strategies to the same currency pair. Uh, let's first uh, discuss the first method of diversification when you apply the same strategy to different currencies. However, in this webinar, I will show you a practical example how to combine both methods. Okay, you know that uh, all, currency, all currencies can be divided into three groups, major currency pairs, minor currency pairs, and exotic currencies. So major currency pairs all contain the US dollar on one side. So it, either on the base side or quote side. And these pairs are the most frequently traded pairs in the Forex market. Uh, the majors generally have the lowest spread and are the most liquid. Uh, you know that EURUSD is the most traded pair with a daily trade volume of nearly 30% of the entire Forex market. Uh, minor currency pairs, so currency pairs that do not contain the US dollar are known as cross currency pairs or simply crosses. Um, the most active crosses are derived from the three major non-US dollar currencies such as Euro, UK Pound and Yen. And exotic currency pairs. So exotic currency pairs are made up of a major currency paired with the currency of an emerging or strong but smaller economy from a global perspective, such as Hong Kong, Singapore or um, European countries outside of the Eurozone. Uh, exotic pairs are not traded as often as the majors or minors, so often the cost of trading these pairs can be higher oh, because uh, due to the lack of liquidity in these markets. Let's now speak about correlation. So, you know, currency pairs correlate with each other. Please look at this table on the screen. This is the table of correlation. I took it from the internet. 
Um, it can be found on many websites devoted to Forex. Uh, in financial um, in financial world, correlation is a statistical measure of how two securities move in relation to each other. And currency correlation tells us whether two currency pairs move in the same opposite or totally random direction over some period of time. Okay, mm, a positive correlation, uh, correlation uh, with the coefficient of um, uh, plus 0 0.5 or 50 percent to 100 percent implies that the two currency pairs will move almost in the same direction and negative correlation so when uh, coefficient is about uh, is from uh, minus 100 percent to minus 50 percent means that the two currency pairs will move almost in the opposite direction if the correlation is about zero, the movements between two currency pairs are said to have a zero or no correlation at all. They are completely independent and random from each other. We have no idea how one pair will move in relation to the other. If you have the strategy that successfully works on different currency pairs, you'd better use it on currencies that have a weak correlation so from minus 50 percent to plus 50 percent but usually the pairs you're going to trade have a strong correlation and for such cases i created a rule Let's look at this rule. So if correlation is between minus 50% uh, to 50%, uh, so we don't reduce the lot size of the strategy that creates these two pairs. <clears throat> if the correlation is from uh, minus 75% to minus 50% or from 50% to plus 75 percent then we reduce the lot size of this strategy by 25 percent and if these two currency pairs are, have a strong correlation for example from minus 100 percent to minus 75 percent or from plus 75 percent to plus 100 percent then we reduce the lot size of um, um of the strategy by 50 percent okay guys if you have any questions regarding um this rule or uh just some other questions don't, don't hesitate to ask uh, I see that uh, Philip is raising his hand. Philip, do you want to ask something? If uh, if yes, then uh, please um, uh, write a question. I will answer. So uh, later, I will explain how to apply this market correlation rule on practice. Okay, so let's now skip to the strategies. Um, let's talk about trading strategies. Um, so, you know, um, Forex strategies are very different from each other and profit from completely different market inefficiencies. We can divide it we can divide strategies into four main groups this is my classification 
which um, I get used to. So trend following strategy, range trading strategy, trading breakouts, and swing trading. So let's first speak about trend following strategy. Trend traders attempt to profit from market trends. Positions are kept open as long as the trend continues, meaning that trend trading can be short, medium, or long-term strategy. Uh, range trading means attempting to make purchases near the bottom end of the range and selling at the top of the range. So we we can call the bottom end as support and top as resistance. The success of this uh, strategy depends on the ability to buy an asset after selling makes the price fall to an oversold condition. Oversold means that the market has observed all selling and buying is likely to emerge. Conversely, one might look to sell an asset after a long rally that makes the price rise to an overbought condition where the buying declines and selling emerges. Okay, there is a question. Oh, there are two questions, and uh, yes, they are quite good. Mm -hmm. So, the question from Terence. Is there a time lag between currency pair correlations so you can benefit from being ahead of the correlation? No, unfortunately, there is no lag. Uh, when I was young, I tried to um, recognize some lag uh, between um, uh, between British pound uh, American dollar and uh, British pound Canadian dollar, but unfortunately there was no lag. I made my own um, calculations, and then I found that there is no lag. Maybe just no, I thought that there could be just a few seconds, but no, uh, we can't use, mm, th there is no lag, so we can't build a, a profitable strategy on it. At least I couldn't. And the question from Ravi. Uh, so the question is that um, the scalping can be, um, can be different type of strategy and should be included in the list. Um, so what what can I say? Um, scalping is usually um, so it's included in range range trading when we um, no um, of course. Uh, some scalping strategies, uh, so you, you you can get a few pips um, even if it's it's a trend market, but usually we apply scalping strategies if um, the market is flat, and so these kind of strategies can be um, can be defined as range trading strategies. So scalping is inside of range trading strategies. Okay, if speaking about range trading strategies, there are numerous indicators which measure overbought and oversold levels like the relative strength index, stochastic, momentum, and others. And these strategies work well when the market has no definable and consistent trend. However, it is possible that market can remain in an overbought or oversold territory for long periods of time. 
The risk of French trading is that the market moves below technical support or above resistance. The next strategy, uh, the next type of the strategy is trading breakouts. A strategy centered on trading breakouts means that a trader will look to buy an asset as it makes new highs or to sell an asset as it makes new lows. New highs and lows can easily be spotted on a chart as they are the extremums um, uh, of previous moves. And many professional traders use these techniques when they um, are managing large sums of money and looking for a major trend to develop. Uh, so the philosophy for this strategy is simple. A, mar a market cannot continue its trend without making new highs or new lows. And this strategy works best when trends are strong and long lasting. It uh, does not matter whether a trend is up or down as the trader is buying new highs and selling at new lows. And of course, one critical drawback of this strategy is that it performs poorly when markets are not able to establish strong trends and trade in ranges. And the next type of the strategy is swing trading. Um, so it is focused on technical analysis. And swing trading involves finding short-term price patterns to trade. Swing traders tend to focus solely on price, paying less attention to value when finding an asset to trade. And uh, so if speaking now about the positions, positions can be held from one to several days longer than day trades but shorter than position trades and swing traders will sometimes trade against the trend if their analysis shows an opportunity uh, of course when you are going to combine a few strategies in the portfolio you should look for the strategies of different types so uh, I think most of strategies that you have are swing trading strategies. Maybe some of them are range trading strategies. Okay, uh, and yes, you can combine. Um, so now let's speak about the portfolio we are going to create. Yeah, of course, you can combine, uh, for example, two range trading strategies. But if so, you should reduce its lot, no, their lot by 50%. So don't put all the eggs in one basket. On our webinar, I want to present three different strategies trading on 10 different currency pairs and by the end of the webinar i will show you how to create a portfolio with these strategies so let's continue the first strategy we are going to explore is stomper that you already know uh, let me just repeat a few things about this strategy uh, the strategy inside this expert is quite easy it draws the side channel if the price touches the lower bound of the channel, then it opens buy. If the price touches the upper bound, it opens sell. Um, of course, there are a stop loss and a take profit, but usually the strategy closes the position with a smaller profit. It depends on other factors. So, for example, if we have a long position, we can uh, close it here when uh, the price touches the upper bound. Okay. So this uh, the stomper is a scalper. 
and uh, you see um, this is such a scalper that trades uh, better in a, when the market is flat so it's a range trading strategy um, another strategy that I want to demonstrate this strategy is called London breakout Uh, so, this is the system of automatic trading during the London session, which um, uses a strategy to identify a valid trading range in the intraday time frames and evades the breakout to open position. So, for example, you may see here. Uh, we identified a trade range from here to here. I hope you see my mouse. Um, but if not, then you can uh, notice uh, red and uh, blue arrows. So then uh, the price broke this range and we opened the sell. Uh, I mean a short trade. However, then the price rebound and we close uh, this trade by a stop loss. Um, it also broke uh, the resistance level here, so uh, the level of um, the upper bound of the of this range. But then the price went back, and again we fixed uh, we closed this trade with a stop loss. However, then the price went down and broke the lower bound once again and this trade was successful so we earned really much for this trade that was our profit here you see this is the profit we closed this trade with a profit and it compensated two losses Okay, so just uh, once again, I will repeat the logic. Uh, after defining valid trading range, this expert advisor waits to open position at the breakout of that range. Okay, this expert advisor was already optimized, but I recommend you to optimize it once again using the procedure from my course, optimizing expert advisors in MetaTrader 4. Okay, let's move forward to another strategy, which is called Accelerator Bot. Uh, this um, expert advisor defines overbought and oversold conditions using the superposition of different indicators like ADX, Stochastic, Accelerator, and ATR. And um, this expert advisor work, yeah, it works on um, USD, Japanese Yen. And I also optimized it for um, other cross courses with Japanese Yen. This strategy is a swing trading strategy. So the previous one is a breakout trading strategy. The stomper is range trading strategy. And this is swing trading strategy. So we, we have uh, three strategies of three different types, but unfortunately we don't have a trading straight of, we don't have a trend following strategy. <clears throat> Okay, Okay. now let me show uh, my uh, the statistic I collected. Wait a second. Uh, 
So what uh, this is my Metroid R4, where I optimize expert advisors. Um, so uh, we compare uh, their performance for the period from uh, September 2017 to um, to the end of February 2018 for six months. So uh, I will demonstrate a few examples for you. Here it is. Uh, for example, let's uh, start with accelerator board on um, Australian dollar against Japanese yen. Uh, it works on H4 time frame. Okay, this is how it works quite successfully. Uh, and from this report, we need to know these numbers, total net profit and maximal drawdown. So I copied them and you can find it here. This is total net profit. Oh, wait a second. This is total net profit of the strategy. This is maximal drawdown. Yeah. Okay, good. Another strategy. Uh, the same strategy on Euro Japanese Yen. Here it is. The performance looks really good. This is our net profit and this is drawdown. Okay, here it is. Let's choose another one. Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, this is the same strategy trading on uh, American dollar against Japanese yen. Uh, it also looks good. Uh, okay, the total net profit is about 800 and maximal drawdown is to $244. Okay, here it is. Let's check uh, another strategy. Let it be a London breakout. It works on uh, Canadian dollar uh, against Swiss franc. Mm, looks good. But however, total net profit is very low, just uh, more than um, 300. But maximal drawdown is about 100. This strategy also works on Euro USD. Uh, the performance is much better, but you see, there is a period when the strategy didn't earn anything. However, from this period, it earned much. So the total net profit is 745. Maximal drawdown is just 300. Uh, another, th this strategy on different currency pair on British pound against American dollar. Let's see how it worked. It worked better, but of course we see that there was a period of drawdown. Oh, I, I can't say that it's a high drawdown, but uh, at, from this uh, trade to this trade, the strategy didn't earn anything. However, the maximal drawdown is just uh, 242 and the total net profit is 1,244. Let's now check how Stomper performs. This is Euro Swiss franc. Okay, so um, I don't like how it uh, worked through this period, but then it was a, a period of uh, many win trades. So the strategy earned just about uh, $200 and maximal drawdown is also low. It's just $100. Uh, usually this is what you get from your expert advisors. So they don't uh, trade stable.
so usually the picture looks like this uh, when um, uh, when there are periods when the strategy is in the drawdown the periods when the strategy doesn't earn anything and the periods when it earns much and our task is to combine uh, these strategies to create a portfolio that will be more stable okay this is how stromper works on euro gbp not so good there was a drawdown here and uh, total net profit is about 100 and the maximal drawdown is almost the same uh, it also worked on british pound against swiss franc and i really like the picture however there was also a period of drawdown here so total net profit is uh, more than 200 while the maximal drawdown is also high it is slightly below than 200 dollars and another pair american dollar against swiss franc so the strategy looks good uh total net profit is more than 200 and maximal drawdown is 133 however there was a period of uh, two consecutive losses here then it earned much then there was another loss and then uh, the strategy performed well okay i tested and optimized all the strategies for this period from september to the end of the february and all the statistics what is he oh, okay all the statistics we need is here this is total net profit this is the maximal drawdown for these strategies then i um, calculated a recovery factor so uh, maybe you know this uh, indicator so uh, I mean this parameter so a recovery factor um, so to, to calculate this parameter you should divide total net profit by maximal drawdown so you see we divided profit uh, the profit was divided by maximal drawdown um, actually, um, recovery factor should be more than two, and then the strategy is considered to be good. Okay, so if we are going to apply um, one trading strategy on four different currency pairs, first thing that we should check is the correlation between these currencies. So, for example, uh, if speaking about Stomper, we want to run it on Euro GBP, GBP Swiss franc, Euro Swiss franc, and American dollar Swiss franc. So now our task is to find the correlation between these pairs. So let's go to the tab correlation. You can also find this tab in uh, my um, presentation. Oh, there is a question. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a good question by Rene. Um, so the maximal drawdown figure in the strategy tester only counts drawdown for closed trades. The real experience drawdown while trades are still open can be much bigger. That's true. So how I, how I personally deal with that? Do I take it into consideration? Mm -hmm. okay so um, yeah so what to do in this case yeah that's a good question um, 
yeah, sometimes maximal drawdown can be um, much higher because uh, we calculated. Uh, using only closed rates. However, there can be a floating loss at the moment and it um, we can see it from the chart, from a backtest. Uh, for such cases, I recommend you to make a forward test and monitor your account uh, by using um, some uh, monitoring services from the internet, some websites when you can um, just uh, send your login and your password and all the um, uh, statistics from your trades will be on this website. I, I, I know some of this uh, website with, uh, where you can monitor your strategies for free, but um, I'm not sure if I can um, uh, pronounce them on the webinar, so maybe later uh, you can ask me in um, our uh, four private trading group in Facebook. I will show you a few examples uh, where you can monitor your strategies. And uh, so before you run this um, this strategy or even the portfolio, you should um, make a forward test. And for example, for for half of the year. And from this period, you can estimate what was um, uh, the maximal drawdown if we um, uh, so if we calculate it not on the balance but on equity. Uh, what else? If speaking um, about maximal drawdown in the strategy tester, uh, to yeah, yeah, so Rene, you are right. Sometimes um, the real uh, maximal drawdown can be two times higher. And what I suggest in this case, I suggest you to um, have a larger deposit. So at least your deposit should be four times higher than maximal drawdown shown in the strategy tester report. Uh, at least four times higher. But it's better to use um, to have a deposit of a maximal drawdown multiplied by eight. So in this case, it's okay to trade with this strategy even if it has a larger drawdown that it was shown in the strategy tester. Okay, I hope I answered your question. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Yeah, of course there is um, there is a software that can help you to um, to define what was a real drawdown if we calculate it on equity, not on balance. Okay, let's continue. So where do we? Okay, our task was to find a correlation between these four pairs. So for example. Uh, we are going to run Stomper on these four currency pairs. Let's find if they correlate with each other. For example, Euro GBP. Here it is. Uh, for example, Euro GBP correlates only with um, GBP CHF. The correlation is minus 32%. So here it is. Yeah, here it is. So it means that we should reduce the lot size by 25% for uh, this strategy trade in Euro GBP and British pounds with franc. So we reduced it. Let's now check how Euro CHF correlate with, uh, correlates with USD CHF. The 
the correlation is 80 percent it means that we should reduce our lot size for the strategy trading both uh, currency pairs by 50 percent according to our rule where is it this is the rule current um, currently the correlation is minus oh the current relation is 80 percent so it's from 75 to 100 percent so we should reduce the lot size by 50 percent and also uh, British pound Swiss franc correlates with uh, Euro CHF the correlation is 82 but um, so uh, because um, so uh, I, I applied um, I minus 25 percent for this pair uh, maybe maybe I did a mistake but I'm not sure okay so okay uh, maybe there was something wrong okay so let's see again uh, how this currency pair correlates with usd swiss franc ah it's 61 so it's 61 percent here that's why i am um, um at minus 25 percent here and here and i decided not to um not to include the correlation between these two currency pairs because the uh, the lot size was already um, reduced so we can't reduce it more because it's already low okay let's now check these strategies these three Okay, here it is. Here the correlation is 94% and 82. So that's why we should uh, reduce the lot size by 50%. And now let's check these strategies, uh, this strategy and these currency pairs. Okay, so Canadian dollar Swiss franc doesn't uh, correlate with British pound American dollar, but it correlates with uh, Euro USD. Correlation is minus 67. That's why we reduced the lot size by 25%. And you can also notice that Euro USD correlates with British pound American dollar, yeah, GBP USD. Uh, the correlation is 91 percent so that's why i applied minus 30 percent to uh, every so to uh, to the strategy uh, i mean to these two strategies uh, don't reduce the lot size more than um up to 75 percent so what, what what to do next uh, let's for example um, write here just a basic lot you can write here any amount uh, our task is to to reduce to reduce the, this lot and then to combine these strategies in our portfolio using the weights um, i will tell you i will explain you later how to find these weights 
So or what did we hear? We um, there was 10 lots, then we minus 25%, it's seven and a half. 10 lots minus 50%, it's five, same thing. Uh, 10 lots minus 75%, it's two and a half. Uh, here, 10 lots minus 50%, it's just five lots. And here, 10 lots minus 25%, seven and a half. 10 lots minus 75%, two and a half. And minus 50% here, it's just a five. And now you, our task is to find weights. What is weights? How to weight our strategies in the portfolio? This is the main, uh, the most important thing. So what should you do? You should, uh, uh, as um, according to my experience, the main, uh, the most important factor and parameter to use to range the strategies is recovery factor. And I think that the strategy with the higher recovery factor should trade with the higher lot. For example, uh, this strategy has the highest recovery lot or recovery factor. That's why this strategy should um, uh, should have the highest weight. So how to find this weight? Uh, we should normalize. Uh, just uh, we should normalize the recovery factors. So uh, I sum them here. There, there is there is a sum of all the recovery factors of these strategies, and then I just divided uh, each recovery factor to the sum to find its weight. So our task is to again our task is to weight uh, our strategies in the portfolio. So the strategy with the smaller recovery factor has a smaller um, lot size. Then I just multiplied uh, this lot with these weights. And this is what I get. So th th this is uh, the lot I'm going to trade. Uh, then I just round, yeah, I just round off these numbers. So, for example, the broker I'm going to trade has only one digit uh, at the lot size. So that's why I, uh, if it's written uh, 0 0.23, we should use 0 0.2. So we round these numbers. And this is how we find the lots we are going to trade. Uh, so this is the strategy with the higher uh recovery factor it has one lot this is the second strategy the second highest strategy and i according to this procedure you should trade with 0 0.9 of standard lot um, okay so here are the lots for for the strategies that are going to be included in the portfolio. I also decided to calculate uh, profit, um, net profit and maximal drawdown if I trade with these strategies with these lots. For example, in this case, uh, if I trade London London breakout on GBP USD, it's uh, it would earn uh, 11,000 and maximal drawdown is uh, just uh, 2,200 if I apply this lot. If I trade with this strategy with one standard lot, it would uh, earn uh, 11,000 and maximal draw drawdown is um, 1,900. So then our task is to combine them and to see the overall performance. 
uh, how to do this. So what should I do? I should, uh, for example, here I should run this accelerator bot um, on this pair with uh, with a lot size of um, 0 0.8, as it was mentioned here. So okay, start. So I should run every strategy and save every re report with a new lot size with this with this number as a lot size let's wait until it shows by the way if you're going to optimize this strategy accelerator board um you can use open prices oh no no not open prices but control points to optimize this strategy uh if speaking about london breakout uh only every tick mode and of course uh, if speaking about stomper you should also optimize it in every tick model Uh, by the way, uh, I will upload all their expert advisors, their settings, and the statistics in our um, forex trading group, uh, private forex trading group in Facebook after the webinar, of course. Okay, so this is how it works with this lot size. Then my task is to save this report. Here it is. The report was already saved here before the webinar. So here it is. Uh, and then, and then you, our task is to run every strategy with a new lot size. So this is this is how this strategy performs with a new lot size. Uh, let's check, for example, another one. London breakout with um, a lot size of 0 0.2. This is how it works. Um, then our task is to combine them. Uh, to combine these um, statements, I use a report manager. This program, um, yeah, this program is free. You can find it anywhere in the internet, but I'm also going to upload it to our Facebook group. Let me show you. So here, there should be a list of all, all the reports. So I click File, Open Reports. Then I check all the reports I'm going to uh, combine. So here it is. Uh, it shows the performance of every strategy, you see. By the way, um, you can use uh, dates on the x-axis, but it's okay to use just number of trades. For example, by dates, by trades, if you want. Uh, as for me, I prefer to use dates and then we should combine them so we should merge the reports there is a um, button here merge reports we click and then all the reports uh, all the reports with uh, these slots were merged and this is the overall report this is what we see then your task is to save this report. I have already um, done it. Let me show you. Uh, and this is what we see. This uh, it was our initial balance. 
and this is how the strategy earned. You see, it's almost 40,000, and maximal drawdown is about, now uh, it's 2,069. However, you see, the maximal drawdown here is 2,179. So we decreased our maximal drawdown and at the same time we uh, increased the total net profit significantly. Let's calculate our new recovery factor for this uh, combined, uh, for this portfolio. So I am um, um, uh, the total net profit is divided by maximal drawdown. It's 19. That's quite good. It's much more than um, any of these uh, values. Okay, so is it clear how to use the report manager? Okay, so yeah, uh, so uh, th there is a a suggestion uh, from Rene, it's just not a suggestion. So, uh, for example, if you don't want to download this report manager, you can use uh, the Excel, but it would take much time to combine all the strategies. <laughs> okay, uh, so Uh, the the diversification is exactly this, using different trading strategies and instruments in order to have a higher chance of survival. So, however, diversification must be done correctly because when it is not done adequately, it can have an opposite effect and compound instead of diminish risk. Uh, now I want to share just a few tips for you. Just a few important aspects to take into account. Okay, the first one, drawdown periods should not overlap. When you analyze the long-term reliable uh, performance of your trading tactics, you should ensure that the overlap between drawdown periods is as, as small as possible. Uh, the idea here is that when a system goes into drawdown, the others will go into profit and vice versa. A, a good diversification effort has systems which have a very different drawdown and profit period distributions so that the overall drawdown risk is greatly reduced. For example, in our case, uh, the maximal drawdown was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 2,179, so more than 2,000. And in our portfolio, when we combined all the strategy, it was reduced, not much, but it was reduced. Uh, the second aspect, it's not so much about having different trading tactics. Many people believe that the key to diversification is to have a system that is a trend following, another is range trader and a scalper or something that trades very short term movements. It makes sense. But when you build your portfolio, don't focus on the strategies used, but um, uh, you, 
so focus on the distribution of drawdown periods. So you can use, for example, two range trading strategies, but if um, their drawdown periods are different, then it's good for your portfolio. Uh, the third one, okay, there is a question. Um, there is a question from Fritz. Um, where you can download find the report manager software i will upload to our uh, private forex trading group in facebook so don't worry i will upload by the way all the expert advisors shown in this webinar and my presentation too okay the third aspect is that systems are more important than instruments According to my experience, I have noted that diversification in systems is much more important than diversification in instruments. Having many systems trading one same instrument is better than having a single system trading many instruments because different trading tactics provide more robustness than adding other instruments. Yeah, for example, sometimes uh, one of my strategies stopped work, yeah, stopped working on all the instruments. Facebook group. So, Ravi, uh, yeah, we have a, um, it's a Forex board private trading group on Facebook. Uh, so if you are not a member of this group, just um, uh, send a message by email to Damian and he will add you, of course. Okay, another aspect is that you should diversify brokers. Uh, perhaps one of the most overlooked aspects of forex trading and diversification is the fact that you should not use a single forex broker. Uh, there is no central exchange in forex and brokers can have different liquidity and execution issues. So it becomes important to always diversify brokers. Some brokers also have different quotes. Uh, also, Keep tabs on individual performance. Very important part of portfolio trading and diversification is to keep a record of the performance of um, individual systems so that you can tell if any particular system is behaving statistically very different to compare to how it behaved during your previous live testing or back tests. I always keep an individual system record. And of course, evaluate drawdown death and uh, compare them to the historical drawdowns. Uh, keep an eye on equity drawdown when designing portfolios. Very important issue that is generally overlooked when designing trading portfolios is the potential open drawdown that is created by the different strategies. This is what, um, if I'm not mistaken, there was a question about it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there was a question by Rene that uh, the maximal drawdown figure in the strategy tester is calculated based on the balance, so based on closed trades, but, uh, your task is to also uh, monitor open drawdown, which is calculated on equity. It is very important when you have a large number of systems. And um, so also make sure that all the systems have stop losses 
and uh, each system is traded on the risk that you set for this exact strategy. And of course, the last one is not to forget to change magic number for the expert advisor trading different currency pairs on the same account. So if you apply one expert advisor for different currency pairs, um, change the magic number for, for these pairs when you run this expert advisor. If you don't do this, there is a chance for rabbits to be confused. And of course, it can affect your portfolio performance. Okay, guys, um, this is all I wanted to say at this webinar. So now I want to run a poll. How satisfied are you from this webinar when one is bad and five is excellent? So please vote. So as you see, diversification is a very important aspect of Forex trading that has the ability to increase our chances of long-term survival by using several different trading systems with drawdown periods that tend, that tend to remain separated and trading several systems on different instruments, diversifying your broker and keeping a record of each individual system's performance, you certainly will gain a higher probability of surviving in the Forex market in the long term. Okay, so please vote. I'm gonna close this poll. Yeah, I'm closing it. Thank you for voting, by the way. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have some questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Oh, yeah, I'm waiting for a few questions, if you have them, and then I will finish the webinar. Okay, there is a question. Okay, there is a question. Isn't the data used in Excel spreadsheet just depends on the time periods used for backtest? For example, a different time period could show the different strategies do not work well. That's true. Um, that's why I recommend you to use longer periods. For example, um, uh, for example, you optimized all of your expert advisors and then you um, then you run them for forward test. For example, for um, half a year. Uh, so just collect the performance for this uh, for this period of forward test and then compare these strategies. Of course, uh, there are periods when these strategies are in the drawdown. So that's why um, that's why you'd better choose longer time period here for, for optimization and to um, 
to compare the strategies. So maybe the results will be different. I just want to show uh, on this webinar, I want to show you the procedure. And your task is to find, uh, to compare the performance of the strategy for the period like one year, two years, even three years. And if you're satisfied with this, then uh, run it uh, for forward test. Yeah, there is a question for Rene. Do you use Monte Carlo simul uh, simulations? Ah, Monte Carlo simulations on the portfolio level. Um, no, I don't. Uh, is it possible to use a neural network to manage the lots to use in each strategy? Um, no, um, I can't say exactly. So as for me, I don't use neural networks in my expert advisor or to manage the lots. Uh -huh, another good question from Leonardo. Is it possible to adjust the lots based on the success rate of each strategy. Yes, that's true. Uh, for example, if you see that one of the strategy performs better than uh, another, you should uh, recalculate everything using, um, using, using the period of forward test. And uh, for example, the period it was um, it was run on um, uh, your real account. And then if the strategy really performed better than another one, it would have uh, a higher um, uh, recovery factor. That means that you should um, increase the load for this strategy and decrease the load for another strategy. So just recalculate it from time to time. Okay. More questions? Okay, so has a trend following strategy worked for you? Um, I had a uh, trend following strategy that performed well. Uh, maybe you can find it in one of my courses on Udemy. I'm maybe I'm yeah on Udemy. Uh, the strategy is called Rainbow, but uh, yeah, sometimes it performs really well. But uh, of course, uh, during uh, the period of flats. This strategy um, has many consecutive losses. But anyway, I can call it um, successful. Okay, the question, um, the continuation of the question uh, from Leonardo. In this case, the thing is to do it online. I mean, the expert check each candle closed and the success rate and change the lot volume. Uh, no, I don't think it makes sense to uh, change uh, lots uh, online. So when the strategy is running, so uh, Uh, as for me, usually I, um, I recalculate um, these statistics every two months. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes more often it depends on the um, it, it, on, it depends on the strategy's performance. For example, if I see that one of the strategies um, does not perform well, I can. Um, I can recalculate everything once again. So, but I, I don't think it makes sense just to change the lot online on every candle. So 
I, I don't think it's uh, it would improve your performance significantly. But uh, maybe you can try. Uh, but I think you should uh, you should code another expert for this operation. Okay, thank thank you guys for coming for the webinar. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask. It's okay. I'm still here. By the way, this webinar was recorded and you can, um, uh, for example, if you were late, you can watch it later on forexboard.com. Okay, thank you guys. Um, I'm going to finish this webinar. Thank you for coming. Uh, see you on our next webinars on Forex Board.